Welcome to the third video in the how to set up Veloz series. To recap, in the first video, we were able to use the Veloz setup wizard to set static and floating management IPv4 addresses on our system controllers. We were also able to configure DNS and NTP server settings on the Veloz chassis. In the second video, we upgraded the system controllers to run the latest version of F5 OS created new chassis partitions running the latest version of F5 OS and finally backed up configuration on the system controllers. In this video, we'll explore configuration options on the Veloz chassis that we created and deploy TMOS tenants. You'll also recall that we created two chassis partitions, the red and green chassis partition. The red chassis partition has slot one assigned to it and has an IP address of 10.144.140.103. The green partition has slot 2 assigned to it and has an IP address of 10.144.140.106. You'll note that both the red and green partitions are currently running. The system controller, chassis partitions and tenants in each partition each have separate sets of users and they have different functions at different levels. The system controller users can create and manage chassis partition, configure management interfaces, install system level controller level software, modify system settings, activate license and set up HA for two system controllers. They can also perform user management for the system controllers. The chassis partition users can create and manage VLANs, create and manage lags, manage interfaces, manage port groups as needed, and display VLAN listeners if necessary. The chassis partitions are designed so that all of the partition configuration data is constantly stored in an active location and replicated to a standby location. It is already configured for high availability. The command to display chassis partition redundancy configuration is show system redundancy. Here, the active chassis instance on the green partition is on system controller 1 and the standby chassis instance is on controller 2. Let's now talk a little bit about network configuration for the partition. For this section of the demo, let's use the red chassis partition that has slot 1 assigned to it. Over here, I'm logged in to the red chassis partition via the UI. To look at the interfaces available, navigate to the interfaces setting under network settings. You'll note that there are two interfaces on blade 1 interface 1.0 and 2.0. Both of these interfaces are not assigned to a VLAN. So the next step is to navigate to the VLANs tab under network settings. Let's go ahead and create two VLANs. Let's create a LAN VLAN with a VLAN tag of 50 and a van VLAN with a VLAN tag of 51. The next step is to associate these VLANs to interfaces. You can do that by navigating to the interface itself and then clicking on the VLANs that you want associated with this interfaces. Save and close. Let's do that for the second VLAN as well. Although we're not creating lags in this demo, let's take a quick minute to go over configuring lags. Lag configuration is done on the chassis partition under the lag tab under network settings. So navigate to the lag. Add, to add a lag, simply hit add. You then can choose the uh, interfaces that you want members of this lag. 
and then also optionally configure the LACP parameters for this lag. Now that we have VLANs configured and assigned to interfaces, we are now ready to spin up a tenant. But before we can do that, now is a good time to take a configuration backup on the chassis partition. In order to create a backup on the chassis partition, navigate to the configuration backup setting under system settings. Hit create. Provide a name and hit create. The chassis partition administrator is responsible for configuring tenant deployments within the chassis partition. A tenant is a guest system running software in a chassis partition. You can run several tenants within the same chassis partition. Each blade has 128 gig of memory of which 95 gig is reserved for tenants. The maximum number of lightweight tenants that can be created on a single blade is 22. A big IP tenant on the Velus platform is managed similarly to how a VCMP guest is managed today on the Veprion platform. This means that the administrator can connect to the big IP tenant via CLI, REST API or UI and have the same experience as on their existing F5 platforms. The tenant is assigned dedicated vCPU and memory resources and is restricted to specific VLANs for network connectivity. What you're seeing on the screen are snapshots from the Velus config guide that is available to download from f5.com. F5 has use case dependent tenant image size, vCPU and memory recommendations in this guide. There are four types of tenant images to choose from that can be deployed on a Velos system. They are T1, T2, all and T4. The T1 F5 OS image is a lightweight image that has limitations and is not generally recommended for most deployments. It is the smallest of image sizes but it has only one slot or volume for TMOS software meaning that it cannot support upgrades. The T2 F5 OS image is intended for a tenant that will run LTM and or DNS only. It is not suitable for tenants needing other modules. This type of image is best suited in a high density tenant environment where the number of tenants per blade is high. F5 recommends limiting the amount of disk space assigned to each tenant to ensure that the file system on the blade is available to deploy all required tenants. The all F5 OS image is suitable for any module configuration and supports a maximum of 76 gig per tenant. There may be certain use cases that require additional disk capacity such as storing a database and the T4 Velus image is a good candidate for such deployments. Finally, it is important to note that image sizes in this chart only indicate the maximum amount of space a tenant could use, but don't indicate what will actually be consumed on a physical disk. After you've determined the big IP tenant image type that is best suited for your deployment, you'll want to ensure that you're running a version of big IP tenant software that is compatible with the version of F5 OS on your Velus chassis. Link to this video is a link to F5's hardware software compatibility matrix. Navigate to the Velus section and you'll find the versions of Big IP software to download. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose the 1517 Big IP tenant software. Now that we've determined the image type and version of TMOS, that we want to run on the big IP tenant. Let's go ahead and download the QCOW images for our tenants. In order to do so, navigate to downloads.f5.com.
click on find the download click on 151x choose 151, 1517 tenant f5 os software once here choose the image type that you want to download in this case i'm going to choose the all f5 os qcow zip bundle you can upload a tenant image via the web ui or the cli we'll use the ui for this demo navigate to tenant images under tenant management and click on import and provide the path to where the tenant image is stored to upload the image to your Velos chassis. You'll note that I've already uploaded the 1517 all QCOW image for our demo. Alternately, you can also use the file utilities under system settings to upload your image. Ensure that the image has been replicated before you go ahead and start creating tenants. Now that our tenant is successfully uploaded and replicated, we can go ahead and start deploying a tenant. In order to deploy a tenant, go to the tenant deployment section under tenant management. Click on add, input a tenant name. You'll note that the latest versions of F5 OS support both big IP and big IP next tenant types. In our case, we'll choose the big IP type, the 1517 QCOW allowed slot is one, which is the only slot we have assigned to this chassis partition. We're going to assign a management IP v4 address of 10.144.140.104, a prefix length of 24, the gateway address we're going to make both VLANs 50 and 51 available to this tenant. We're going to allocate 8 vCPUs. We're going to change the tenant state to be deployed. We want crypto acceleration enabled and appliance mode disabled. Hit on save and close. You can now see that our 8 vCPU tenant is running and can be accessed like a big IP tenant running on any other platform via CLI, API or UI. Let's quickly connect to our TMOS tenant running on our Velas chassis using the UI. You'll note that this tenant is no different from a big IP running on any other platform and can be managed similarly. To summarize, in this video, we created VLANs, mapped them to interfaces, went over tenant types and sizing recommendations, and finally deployed a big IP tenant on our Velos chassis. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.